Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1514, the topic is training and the title is How to Grow Without a Painful Pump. So we're going to title this actually How to Grow Muscles Without a Painful Pump, so that way people have a little more idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is, uh, this actually, this topic came from a listener. They had a question. I'm going to read through kind of what they wrote. We're going to answer it, and I think it'll be a fun conversation. So the title of the email was Lactic Acid, and their message, I'm going to read all the way through it, then I'll come back through it and kind of break it down. Uh, as they wrote, what causes it? How can I avoid it? Any supplements that help to buffer it? Are there certain foods to avoid? Why do some muscle groups seem to produce more of it? So then they went on to kind of explain, I have 38 years of lifting experience, but I have never enjoyed training my biceps because they burn so intensely that I can't stand it. Same here. I hate training my biceps. (laughs) Um, I love the way they would look, but they're they're short. Like I have a short head, like like a short connection. So I don't have nice long... Uh, bicep muscles they're short and they've always been ridiculously painful when I train them I like like the pump and the burn I get in like my triceps and I like training my back I've learned to like my legs but I've never really enjoyed training my biceps they they never looked dominant so that was not very motivating and they always burned and hurt (laughs) so I didn't really like training them myself so they say I'm I have managed to build Decent biceps from heavy deadlifts, rows, and other back work. Same here. (laughs) Um, I would love to have bigger biceps, but training them directly is unbearable. I consider myself to be a fairly mentally strong lifter, except when it comes to training biceps. You have no idea how hard it is to admit this. Um, That's a bummer that you feel like it's, uh, you know, hard to admit. I think we, we all have stuff that we don't like, we hate. You know, it doesn't make you a baby or anything if training your biceps is painful and you just don't want to do it. Uh, At least I hope it doesn't because that's how I feel. (laughs) I don't think I'm a baby. I've done a lot of miserable, painful things to myself. Uh, And I do train my biceps from time to time uh, directly, but I don't enjoy it. I have built 19 and 3 quarter inch arms. I almost am at 20 inches, almost. I need to someday just kind of buckle down and go for it. But I have 19 and 3 inch, uh, 3 quarter inch arms, and I train my, my arms directly in isolation work maybe once or twice a month. I really don't do it too often. One main reason is I don't like training my biceps that way, and I'm more preoccupied with my other body parts that aren't growing as well like I would love to have a much bigger chest so if I have time I'd rather do a bunch of chest stuff than tricep press downs or bicep curls and I want to have bigger back bigger legs and whatever you know better six pack kind of want everything to grow (laughs) so that's uh, I tend to focus more on the bigger body parts uh, and just let my arms be kind of what they are now what I want to do is go through, kind of talk about this, and there is a general assumption in the questions uh, that the person sent in that it's when a person is training their muscles, such as their biceps, and they experience a burn and a pump within the muscle that's super intense that causes the discomfort that they talk about, and they're associating that lactic, lactic acid is the reason for that pump. That's actually not true. So what causes the burning sensation in our muscles that we believe to be, and we as in, I'm not included in that, but what researchers believe (laughs) uh, to be related to the pain that you feel, that burning sensation, is actually the lowering of the pH balance in the muscles. Uh, so the the muscles are becoming more acidic, which is it's called acidosis. So when the muscles are contracting, 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 the acidity of the muscle cells increases. Incre- well, the pH balance decreases, which causes it to be more acidic, uh, and that is what causes the burn and the burn and the burn. So what they associate to be the reason for the buildup of lactic. I mean, uh, the buildup of the acidosis, the acid in the muscle, is mostly related to um, hydrogen buildup without the ability of us to have enough oxygen to come through and and buffer that and kind of take it back out. So the one thing that we do know is that lactate, 
uh, which people think, like what they think lactic acid is, is the compound lactate with hydrogen combined to it. So that's what people would think like lactate, lactic acid is. But what they actually found when they did studies and stuff of muscles is they, they found that there's a buildup of lactate in the muscles, but it's not necessarily, it, well, they've actually found that it's directly opposite of creating an acidic environment. So when they used to test muscles and they tested them and found like, okay, when a muscle fatigues, what do we see? We see a huge increase of lactate in the muscle and we see a huge increase of hydrogen in the muscle. So they assumed that those two were coming from, uh, basically when you break down glucose, you break it down into a compound called pyruvate and then that can be in one way broken down uh, into lactate and hydrogen. And what they believed was that they were coming from each other. But what's actually really funny and kind of neat is lactic acid, which would be the presence of lactate and hydrogen combined, actually hasn't been seen in the muscle cells, not combined together. There's been increased presence of each, which is why they assumed that they were uh, both a combined byproduct of muscle contraction, but was actually what was actually seen and recorded was the presence of each separately. And what they've now found is that lactate is actually uh, produced to try to buffer the hydrogens, uh, and it actually can act in a way to reduce acidosis and actually make your muscles hurt less. So there's actually not the, it's not related to lactic acid as to why we have a burning sensation in our muscles that's more directly related to insufficient oxygen being uh, into getting into the muscle cells to to buffer and take away the the hydrogen which is causing the acidic environment so it's not lactic acid it's actually lack of oxygen so how can we fight against the acidic buildup in our muscles is actually we, uh, we have to find ways to increase oxygen intake. That's what would actually help buffer the hydrogen uh, that is causing the acidosis, which is causing that, that burning sensation and the pain. So what we can get into is we actually want to get into better cardiovascular shape. The, the more aerobically fit you are, the, the less acidosis buildup, like it, it happens slower because you need less muscular, well, well, we'll just go with it happens slower. <laughs> I don't want to get too crazy, but it happens slower if you're more aerobically fit. So we can just get in better cardiovascular shape. You can do 10 minute walks, you know, either before your training and then like after your training or unrelated, maybe just, you know, take a walk at lunch, you know, and then go train later in the day. Or if you have non-training days, go for a walk on those days. Just, just do more aerobic activity. One of the ways I do it is I add a muscle cardio element um, into my workouts. And what that means is just something that my lungs and my muscles are burning at the same time. So rather than being just the, the muscles burning, I get my lungs going at the same time. So I might do a circuit. The other day I did uh, kettlebell swings into uh, a goblet front loaded like goblet squat. And then I did uh, push-ups and that was horrible. Dumb idea. It was fantastic. <laughs> um, it absolutely died. But that's stuff that I'll do to stay aerobically uh, in shape. So I'm 200 and around 280 pounds right now. I don't run. <laughs> Even if something's chasing me, I don't. I think I'd rather just fight it. <laughs> so uh, I'm not. I don't want to run anymore. It kills my shins, and I'm not built to run. I don't have any desire to run. I did it when I was younger. I did all the running in the world and hated every second of it, so I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, but I will do muscle cardio. I will go for walks. I'll do farmer's carries, tire flips. Uh, I'll carry a sandbag thing every now and then, but that's not my favorite. Uh, just just different type of like straw man events for cardio, just very lightweight <laughs> straw man events, uh, or going for walks. So all of that stuff can be ways to improve cardiovascular shape. We also do have supplements that can help. So Bronchade is something that uh, you can get um, 
You have to get it like over the counter. You have to sign for it so you don't make like meth out of it. But it's Broncade and it's a vaso, uh, vaso, vasodilator so it helps just kind of make it easier for you to breathe and get more oxygen in i have exercise induced asthma which was really bad when i was younger and i was actually in the hospital for it uh, multiple times um, but bronchite is something i'll take and that can help my workouts i don't take it all the time sometimes i just kind of forget and i don't train in a very heavy um, aerobically demanding way. If I'm doing high sets of deadlifts or squats, uh, it's funny, I'll all of a sudden remember. <laughs> but if I'm just doing boring, basic kind of bodybuilding stuff, which I love, but it's not a ton of aerobic uh, challenge, I tend to kind of forget to take the bronchade. You can do other supplements, which you don't have to go to a pharmacy and sign for, which are basically just nitric oxide supplements. That is super helpful uh, for increasing oxygen uh, kind of intake and helping with oxygen uh, when you work out. You might have heard of like beta alanine and L-arginine. They're kind of precursors to nitric oxide. So you can find anything in those families, anything in that uh, will definitely help. And then the another thing that really helps that is sounds super corny is just taking deeper, longer breaths when you're out of breath. So if you do like a set of bicep curls and they're hurting, take really slow, long, deep breaths in your rest periods and that'll actually help pull in more volume of oxygen and that'll actually help reduce the burning sensation faster. So the worst thing you can do is just a bunch of quick, fast panic breaths. <laughs> That's not going to help a lot. So take long, slow, deep breaths. So when we want to reduce the painful pump, that painful burning sensation that we have uh, when we work out, is you want to, in this whole category of advice, I'm still going to give more, is try to increase oxygen intake. You want to just be better at bringing oxygen into the body. That can be getting better in cardiovascular shape, using supplements like Broncade or a nitric oxide supplement, and then also remembering to take D long breaths. So I remember when I was uh, in football, uh, they used to tell us all the time, like when we would get out of breath and we were trying to recover, normally you'd want to like put your hands on your knees and bend over and our coaches would always tell us, put your hands behind your head and stand tall. And it's like, that's horrible feeling. That That's awful. Um, the hands above the head was unnecessary, but standing tall and getting deep breaths was really good advice. Uh, so even if they don't know why they were saying that, that was actually pretty good advice. Just taking deep, long breaths. Now, some things we can do in our training actually will help as well. So work on some of the oxygen stuff, consider some of the supplements, but we can actually change some of the structure of how we train muscles that do develop that painful burn, is we can shorten our time under tension. So rather than doing one set of 40 seconds of something, you can just do ten bout, uh, four bouts of 10 seconds. So a term for this is called cluster sets. So I might do five reps count to five as a rest, then five reps count to five as a rest, five reps count to five as a rest, five reps, boom, 20 reps. Now another way is doing unilateral movements. So I might do five bicep curls in one arm, then let it relax while I do five bicep curls in the other arm, let it relax while I go five bicep curls back to the first arm, let it relax and go back and forth. So you can do cluster sets, which are mini bouts of repetitions with mini rests in between. So it's kind of like extended rest pause. Typically, rest pause is done for a single kind of extra bout. She so would do a set of 10. You would count for, you know, maybe 10 seconds, then try an extra set of three. That's what a typical rest pause is, is I have a bout of effort, short rest, another bout of effort, then big, long rest, because that's all one set. Cluster sets are repeated uh, rest pauses. Another version of it, uh, it, it's basically like what you're trying to do is you're trying to be submaximal. So rather than doing an all-out 20, I can use a little bit heavier weight, but just do five when I really could have done 10. Take a short rest, do another five. Maybe I really could have gotten seven. Short rest to do another five. That one actually kind of really hurt. Take a short rest, and then I grind through the last five. And I still get my volume in, but there's lower intensity within the full 20 reps. I can make up for the low intensity by adding a little bit more weight. I can certainly do more weight for four mini bouts of five than I can for a straight bout of 20, right? 
So it's just kind of playing the game of I'm going to reduce the time under tension to reduce my intensity buildup within the singular bout of effort. I want to break that up so I don't get a ton of acidosis buildup. So I'd I can use a little bit more weight to kind of counter that. So cluster sets is a really cool technique. Uh, and I do that. It's just fun to do. It's a fun thing to do. <laughs> um, and then you can extend the rest. That Rather than shortening the time under tension, there's probably like 100 ways to do that. But another option is to extend the rest. So one way to do that is superset opposing body parts. So if you superset biceps and triceps, what happens is when you're doing the triceps, you're increasing the rest between the sets of the biceps. So whatever the painful body part, maybe you get really a lot of burning pain when you train your quadriceps. So superset quadriceps and hamstrings. Just superset the other one on the other side of the body part. <laughs> you know, And that will give greater time to the muscle that accumulates that burning sensation and that pain sensation. It'll give greater time for the body to reestablish a normal kind of pH balance within the muscle between your bouts. So that can be a really cool kind of technique. And it actually improves a little bit of like kind of um, muscle fatigue recovery. So typically whenever we fatigue with muscular contractions, we run out of uh, available electrolytes like potassium and uh, sodium. So what happens when you train a muscle is you deplete that area of potassium and sodium. Well, when you your other areas still have some and the body can kind of scrounge around and try to find it. But if you train the counter body part, you actually push the potassium and uh, sodium back into the first body part you trained faster. So it's actually really kind of neat is that when you superset opposing body parts, you tend to actually have an increased degree of uh, fatigue resistance. So it's really fun when you get into like the nuances of training when you organize body parts. So I do this a lot with my clients and they probably have no clue I'm doing it. But I love doing supersets where I'm either taking advantage of an increase of fatigue uh, where I, I want them to have a ton of muscle fatigue but not a ton of weight load to damage their, their joints or to stress their joints. Or I'll do it like I am first explained where I actually try to increase their ability to resist fatigue so we can actually use heavier weight loads. So I, I do a lot of pairing of stuff like that in their programs which makes it super fun. Um, you can also try to stretch out the volume of training that body part. So rather than doing, you know, three sets of 10 of two different exercises, just do a set of 10 after every other exercise you do. <laughs> so this is called a trailing superset. So maybe I'm doing a bench and triceps day and I'll between my you know, kind of heavier sets of bench press between my heavier sets of triceps, I'll do one set of bicep between all of those. So I might be able to get 10 to 15 sets of bicep in, but I'm just doing it one set at a time while I'm doing all the other body parts. That's a really awesome way to reduce acidosis buildup in the biceps because you're training all those other muscles more intensely. So that is called a trailing superset when you pick an exercise and do a set of it after a set of a bunch of other things. So that's a really cool technique as well. And then another one just to throw out there is to use eccentric overloading. Uh, acidosis increases with the number of contractions. So if you can reduce the number of contractions but still maximize tissue damage, then you're going to get a lot more tissue damage in with a lot less pain. So one of the ways to do that is to do like tempo extremes where I might do a bicep curl where I curl n the normal speed on the way up but I do a 10 count on the way down. Normal speed up on the way up, I do an eight count on the way down. Normal speed up, I do a six count on the way down. Normal speed up, then a four count down, then normal on the speed up, then a two count down, and then whatever reps I think I can do after that. That increases your time under tension, but it re reduces the amount of contractions within that time under tension, so therefore it reduces the acid uh, kind of uh, buildup. So that's a really cool technique. You also have uh, one arm assisted on machines or like a dumbbell preacher curl or something like that. So if you're on a bicep curl machine, use both arms to curl the machine up and then just use one arm to resist it on the way down. Use both arms to curl it up, use one arm to resist it on the way down. And if you do a slow decentric, like a super controlled eccentric, you might only need four, five, maybe even six total contractions to really annihilate that muscle. So that's a really cool technique. 
Another thing I have clients do sometimes is they'll use a hammer curl on the way up, like uh, palms facing, like how you'd hold a hammer, like they to swing a hammer. They're going to curl on the way up with a hammer grip, but then they're going to turn to palm facing up on the way down. We are stronger in a hammer curl position than we are in a palms up position. So if I can curl a heavy weight up in a hammer curl, then I rotate the palms up. Holy freaking crap, is that going to be a huge overload on the eccentric on the lowering portion. So you can do a lot of manipulations with eccentric overloading, and that really helps as well uh, to reduce the number of contractions, reduces the acidosis buildup, uh, but it still accumulates a crap ton of damage, which helps you for growth. So hopefully <laughs> that answered kind of a little bit of everything. Um, you know, when we look at lactic acid, uh, it's not really the thing that we're we're worrying about. Uh, you know, the buildup of lactate in muscles actually might help reduce acidosis. So we don't want to really mess around with that. We don't have to worry about that. Our, our main focus is just going to be how can I increase my ability to intake oxygen so that way I can increase my ability for the oxygen to buffer the hydrogen, the acid buildup, and then also just a bunch of training techniques that I can use to reduce the numbers of contractions uh, per unit of time, and that can reduce the buildup of acid as well. So hopefully that was a ton of good information, and it, hopefully it all made sense. If anybody ever has questions like this, I love this kind of stuff. I really do. It's super fun. I get to kind of polish my knowledge and try to build on a little bit every time I do a podcast like this. So I really love it. I really benefit from it. So I truly appreciate when people send in questions. Even if they're super nuancy, I love this kind of stuff, and I'm sure a lot of other people do as well. I try to blend a little bit of like kind of beginners and intermediate stuff in this podcast, but I love, 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 love the advanced stuff. When I get to work with my high-end athletes, I do all these kind of funny like little nuanced things. So if anybody ever has questions about this stuff, always, always, always feel welcome to reach out and ask. Cool. Well, if you like today's podcast or the podcast in general, please share it. The more people we share the podcast with, the more people can help. That's the whole point. That's the whole goal. Share it on social media, share it in a conversation with people. Just let, let them know that we'll answer their questions for free. Thank you to the people who donate to support the podcast. The podcast is well over $1,000 a year for hosting costs. I give an hour to it every day, and we want to keep it for free. I do my best to try to get this stuff in, regardless of what goes on in my life. So I really appreciate the uh, financial support. So that way, you know, it just costs a little less. So I really do appreciate that. If you do want to donate, you can do so on our website at www.brutalirongym.com. We have options for a one-time donation, monthly donation, yearly donation. You know, even just $5 a month, it does add up and it does help. So thank you to those who do that. Also, if you like the information we share in our podcast, I'm now sharing a lot more on Instagram, on YouTube, and on our website. So I'm really trying to build up a ton of content on the website. So if you haven't been to our website in a while, please go check it out and let me know what you think. And then if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.